to back to Jeffrey for one second, where you were you were talking about Don McGahn, and you know it, it, the the description of the president calling McGahn. He says, "You got to do this. You got to call Rod." And this was about getting rid of getting rid of Mueller. And it seems to me, in reading through all this, and McGahn did not act on it, that McGahn saved the president from himself. Mm. I think. Absolutely. And the exact, and hold on one second, because the exact quote. And I, I want to be precise. Uh, in this Mueller report, at the end of that conversation, when the president heard that uh, Mueller was going to launch his own special investigation, right. he said, and this is a quote in the Mueller report, this is the end of my presidency. Right. I'm, and then he used uh, the F word. Yeah. I'm F. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then he goes on and, do and does this. And McGahn refuses time and time again. You know, he didn't correct the New York Times piece where the president wanted him to issue a correction. And he didn't call Rod. Because it wasn't a correction, we should point out. Because it wasn't a correction. Because it, it, it would have been a lie. Correct. Well, he said it was true. Right. It was true. And then he didn't, you know, he didn't ask uh, Rosenstein to fire Mueller. The president was trying to do this. And, and I think time and time again, people were, were not listening to him, particularly his White House counsel, who understood the repercussions of it, whereas the president either didn't care or didn't understand. And there are other examples in yes. here of people saving the president from himself. Mm -hmm. One largely forgotten figure, KT McFarland, yes. is mentioned in here, where she former deputy for, national security for, advisor. Former deputy national security advisor, one-time ambassador, uh, in nominee to be ambassador to the Singapore, had to withdraw her nomination. But she's asked at one point to write what she regards as a misleading letter mm -hmm. uh, explaining something relating to Michael Flynn, and she refuses to do it. Again, you know, there, there are several people. I mean, I think McGahn is, is most prominent among them. Yeah. Uh, Sessions himself um, at time, you know, doesn't unrecuse. I mean, he would, he, he's asked to unrecuse himself, which would have been absurd. Um, he doesn't do it. And again, I think does the president a service by not not unrecused. At the same time, the president is tweeting, "Why won't the Justice Department do what I want it, what I want it to do for me?" And at some point, I may have to get involved myself. When it, we now know that he was trying to get involved, and he was he was getting pushback of the right kind from people who, who worked for him. Very early on in this investigation, back during the campaign, a source of mine said to me that, that a lot of the evidence, and this is what Intel officials or agencies call open source, a lot of the evidence is open source. In other words, it's public comments, and that goes to both the obstruction issue, but also the, the collusion issue, or just willingness to work with and communicate with Russians. The president made public comments about this, showing his support. And he already went to a degree uh, that, that previous presidential candidates were not willing to go, right? Uh, U.S. presidential candidates have been offered help by foreign powers before. Not to go to, uh, not to play historian here, but Hubert Humphrey in 1968, Adelaide Stevenson in 1960. They've been offered before. They said, no way. I really want to be president, but I'm not going to accept his help. And, and, and what, what the special counsel does not exonerate the president of in the category of conspiracy, or, well, his team, I should say, is of a willingness. They expected it would benefit them, and they showed interest in this help. That's a remarkable thing for a candidate for U.S. That is interesting. And for those who are just tuning in, I just want to go over uh, what we're doing right now. One of the things uh, in the Mueller report... But the Mueller report focuses on two things. One of them is on whether or not there was conspiracy. Ultimately, the conclusion is there was not enough, there is not enough evidence of conspiracy between the Russian government and anyone on the Trump campaign or any knowing American. And then the other question, of course, uh, is obstruction of justice and, and whether or not President Trump committed obstruction of justice in trying to hamper uh, the Mueller team, the FBI, whomever, from uh, conducting this probe. Let, let's reset the big takeaways so far in this redacted version of the Mueller report. Uh, and we're going to go to Evan Perez and Laura Jarrett. Uh, Laura, you have been focused on the obstruction of justice part of this report. What are the big takeaways? Well, Jake, one of the biggest takeaways is how Mueller's team felt constrained by the legal situation here and department guidance on the fact that a sitting president cannot be indicted. And the special counsel's team explains that they are going to abide by that guidance. And they say here, if we had confidence after a thorough investigation of the facts that the president clearly did not commit obstruction of justice, we would so state. 
Based on the facts and the applicable legal standards, however, we are unable to reach that judgment. And from that point on, they lay out a litany, chapter and verse, very detailed, granular episodes of essentially times where the president was putting on pressure on mostly now former officials in his administration to do things that they either refused to do or felt uncomfortable with in the case of the former White House counsel, Don McGahn, also former Attorney General Jeff Sessions, a litany of episodes here of the president putting pressure on these officials and them pressing back. On the question of why Mueller walked through all of this evidence, if he was going to make an ultimate decision to punt here and not reach an ultimate conclusion on whether the president obstructed justice, the Mueller team explains that quite clearly. And they say the reason they did it is because a thorough factual investigation was needed in order to preserve the evidence when memories were fresh and documentary materials were available. And so what they're trying to do here is really preserve a record and build out as much as they can because later on in the report they explain Congress can take up the mantle on this if they so choose. There's nothing that prevents Congress from looking at this situation and deciding for itself as a co-equal branch of government that the president has in fact obstructed justice. Mueller's team explains that quite clearly here, but that they thought fairness concerns counseled against potentially reaching that judgment when no pro charges could rather be brought because it is a sitting president. One other line I just want to highlight for you here, Jake and Wolf. It's interesting, given all the pressure that we've been talking about and all the different episodes with McGahn and Sessions and Lewandowski, they lay out here that the president's efforts to influence the investigation were mostly unsuccessful, but that's largely because the persons who surrounded the president declined to carry out orders or accede to his request. And they go on to say, consistent with that pattern, the evidence we obtained would not support potential obstruction charges against the president's aides and associates beyond those already filed. So even though he was putting pressure on them, he, they say here, we don't see any basis for charges against the people that he was sort of trying to use as a conduit. As McGahn said, he felt he had to resign uh, as opposed to having another Saturday night massacre on his hands. So that gives you sort of a little bit of a flavor of all all the detail that we're learning here on the obstruction of justice section, Wolf and Jake. Yeah. And that's, Very that's, important. that's fascinating because what you're saying there, Laura, is that the Mueller, the reason why more White House aides uh, or administration uh, officials uh, have not been themselves indicted or charged with obstruction of justice is because they ignored President Trump's orders. Yep. Yep. President Trump yeah. would tell the White House counsel, Don McGahn, fire Robert Mueller. Don McGahn said to himself, no, and therefore Don McGahn is a free man. Uh, and the same thing with Corey Lewandowski or any number of other individuals Oops. named in the Mueller report is that the way to, that, they, that all these administration officials preserved their freedom and are not in jail right now or at least charged and in a court right now is because they refused to carry out the orders that President Trump demanded of them.